May we come, O oh Lord our God. having confessed our sins unto God, and having sorrow for our sins, let us recite together the second confidior. I confess, Almighty God, one and only Trinity, God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. So, whoever is in Christ, is a new creation creation the old things have passed away behold all things have become new lord for us your wounds were suffered lord have mercy lord have mercy Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, you alone judge our hearts and despite our sins have not condemned us. Help us to be merciful and forgiving to those who wrong us and to love others as you have loved us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever.
The first reading is a reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads our chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way in the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I form for myself, that they might announce my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow, sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us, they are filled with joy. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippines. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it, or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit and hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed each morning. So great is his faithfulness. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel to Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Jesus 
went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today is Passion Sunday. As you entered the church today, you notice that all the statues, as well as all the crosses, are draped in purple. The color purple, during the liturgical season of Lent, denotes sadness. You will also notice that in our lit liturgy there is no glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit with the response as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Beginning today this portion of the liturgy is replaced with the words Lord for us your wounds were suffered and the response is, O oh Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. The word passion stems from the Latin word pati, meaning to suffer. Webster defines passion as a strong feeling, especially of anger, love, or desire. Passion is also defined as the sufferings of Christ 
between the night of the Last Supper and his crucifixion. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell a lot about the passion of Jesus. The evangelists tell us that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him and that he was to suffer for man. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, Jesus says, For I, the Son of Man, must suffer many terrible things, and I will be rejected by the leaders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the law. I will be killed, but three days later I will be raised from the dead. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ suffered for us physically, but he also suffered in other ways. He was scorned and hated by those he came to save. How painful that must have been for him, having his unconditional love not only denied, but thrown back at him with such hatred. It could be said that this pain must have been and could have been more painful than the horrendous physical suffering he endured. In Luke it states that King Herod tried to save Jesus, but the people screamed for his death. In Luke chapter 23 verse 15, it says, Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to Pilate. Herod states that nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. In Luke 23, 16, Herod says, so I will have him flogged, but then I will release him. But then the most horrible sin of man occurs. In Luke chapter 23, verse 18, it states, Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him, and release Barabbas to us. We have all learned and heard as children that Jesus loves us. But what does suffering have to do with love? In John chapter 3, verse 16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. What greater love is there than this? In John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says, I tell you this, there is no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. Verses like this should cause each of us to feel a greater love for him who knew no sin, but took sin upon himself as St. Paul writes. Synonyms for passion are fervor, ardor, enthusiasm, and zeal. My brothers and sisters, do we feel these emotions when we think of what Jesus went through for us? How could Jesus willingly experience this much pain and torture for us? What human being could do what Jesus did. Could we have the passion for Jesus? Who would be able to look forward to this kind of suffering with these emotions? But today, sadly, so many have rejected and ignored his message of this greatest of all sacrifices. In Luke chapter 22, verse 44, it talks about the pain that Jesus went through in the Garden of Gethsemane. It says that he, 
Jesus, prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Only Jesus, with God as his Father, could go through what he went through. He, knowing of the pain and torture he would soon experience, but the outcome was the goal. Our forgiveness of our sins was the end product. Jesus even prayed that the ordeal he was about to go through be taken away from him. But in the end, he surrendered to God his Father with the prayer, not as I will, but yours. This is the intense part of the passion of Jesus, that he died for our sins. It makes the world's passion so much less. It should bring all of our minds and hearts to a deeper and to a more passionate feeling of love that he did all of this for me. It is with a deep, such a deep emotion of passion that it should well up within each and every single one of us with the simple message, God loves me. And so my dear brothers and sisters, at this Passion Time, the Christian Church has set this time aside for all of us to seek a deeper understanding of what took place on Calvary Hill and a deeper appreciation of what Jesus did for each of us through his example of divine love and sacrifice. It is my prayer that we all pause and reflect upon the importance of the passion of Jesus and that we strive to follow him on his painful journey that we might grow in a greater love for him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure others will be measured out unto you.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, receive the gifts of your people gathered here and instill within us the virtues of tolerance and forgiveness. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. divine love. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence from worldly pleasures, you confirm in us your goodness and help to curb our unbridled vices. On this Passion Sunday, we pray that as we fast in the name of your Son, we may grow together with him and to give unto you eternal glory. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present who faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering this day and that of your whole family, so that we may order our days in your peace, 
that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that salt moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. 
through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, your mercy may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life amen Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, 
and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he has rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. You see the body and the blood. Of God.
blessed is the sinner whose fault is removed and whose sins are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Your son's death on the cross, he has merited us forgiveness of our sins. Through this holy Eucharist, we have been unburdened of shameful past unfaithfulness. And so now we ask that we may serve you with renewed devotion. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit in our one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. to you most holy trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we though unworthy have offered into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you and through your mercy may be effective for myself ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Good morning to all of you. Uh, another nice day. Yesterday was gorgeous with the sun and the warmth, and hopefully we won't be experiencing too much more of the cold weather. I bring to mind that following this morning's Mass, Fellowship Hour, also the monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration Society of the Blessed Sacrament. At four o'clock this afternoon, we will hold uh, the meal in the upper room. This is something that takes place every single year in our central seniorate, and this year we are the host. As it stands right now, we are expecting about 30 people and representatives from all the parishes, 
from Ware and Chicopee and Enfield and Westfield and Northampton. And I know that there are a couple of you who have already um, given me your names. And I do ask that if you can, we'd love to be able to have you come to the banquet. Um, I mentioned in the article that appeared uh, yesterday uh, in the Greenfield Recorder about the meal in the upper room. And it is also included in today's bulletin. So please, if you have a chance, you will not be sorry that you attended. I do bring to mind other announcements. First of all, there is a schedule for making Golomki. Um, and I thank Buddy for that information. Um, as, as you know, this coming Saturday will be the annual Spring Food and Bake Sale. And so, um, please see Marianne Uchnet or, or Shirley, she's not in church today, but Marianne, uh, if you uh, are going to be donating anything for the Spring Food and Bake Sale, last year it was most successful, and I am so appreciative of all the hard work that goes into making the pierogi and the guonki and the baked foods and all the other things that are associated also, we will be having a raffle, and I ask that you see either Mary Ann, good to see you, thank you for bringing up some nice warm weather, and, uh, or, or Lynette, um, if you will be donating uh, gifts for the food and bake sale. Um, donations for Easter flowers, please, we're, the time is running out. We do also make another appeal that if you would like to make a donation for Easter flowers. Um, there are forms in the back of the church. And who will be handling it today? Peg, thank you, Peg. Peg Kostchik, please see Peg in the back of the church uh, following mass. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, the Emmaus walk, that is going to be on May the, May the 11th. Last year we had a pretty good turnout. And again, we are doing it for, for our sister, Karen. So please see Sue DeBrinzi so that um, we can get your name and we can have a great turnout. I think last year, just our parish alone, I think we made in excess of $1,000. Yeah, we made $1,300. $1,300 by taking a little bit of your time and to be a part of Karen's Crusaders. So our thoughts and prayers. Um, a week from tomorrow is going to be the 100th birthday of Jenny DeMara. And so there is a card in the back of the church. If you have not signed it, please do so. And again, Barbara, you know, our thoughts and prayers for your mom. You know, this Jenny is actually the second person that has that has been associated with the parish. Um, uh, Helen Rodak was actually a hundred a couple of uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago and so now Jenny Damara what a beautiful lady and uh, she gave a lot of her time and effort singing in the choir and, and blessing blessing us so our prayers and thoughts will be for Jenny I want to thank my sidekick because without without Wayne if things would make it be a lot more difficult Yesterday, Wayne and I tackled putting up all the purple cloths. And yesterday, before we started to put the, uh, the purple cloths up, we held Holy Mass at 8 o'clock, um, which, because I had a couple of things I needed to take care of, uh, visiting the funeral home to offer prayers for the repose of the soul of Edward Farrick. But we offered prayers and Holy Mass to the angels, because the uh, one of the last, or if not the last, um, um, purple coverings that we took care of was Jesus, and so a ladder has to be put on the side, and the globe with the cross has to be taken down, and Father has to perch himself on that platform, <laughs> and every single year we pray that um, if I'm going to lose my balance, 
I don't grab the statue of Jesus because that, that would be, uh, that wouldn't be cool. So, but I, I want to thank Wayne for all your help. And um, also I want to thank the ladies ahead of time and also Buddy uh, who will be preparing the meal in the upper room. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into this, but it is well worth um, the, um, the participation and I know everyone who has been a part of the meal in the upper room over the years has truly left the, uh, the meal with something special in their hearts. And so is there any other announcements that need to be made? Eric. Um, I have a birthday announcement. Uh, tomorrow, even though she's not going to like that I announce her age, my wife is turning 50. <laughs> so, to that end, I have birthday cake downstairs, and I ask all of you to come downstairs and, and uh, share the birthday cake and share Noel wishes. Did you? I think you made a mistake. Didn't you mean to say 30? 29. <laughs> it's customary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Sue, and a prayer for all those for whom we remember, not only Sue, but also um, friends and relatives and parishioners who are having difficulties health-wise, as well as other difficulties. Uh, they, uh, yes? Could we say a special prayer for two friends of mine who have um, passed away and they're going through some difficult times right now? Yes. Um, and I Please remember in prayer. Any other intentions? Then let us turn to the altar of God and offer him prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Lord, for us, your wounds were suffered. Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. And for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, eternal rest, grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in the peace and the eternal light of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.